Welcome, this is Virtual DSA++, an algorithm for the automated segmentation, labeling, occlusion detection, interactive vessel rendering and pathfinding of the cerebrovascular system. My name is Florian Tam and I'm going to present our paper we submitted as an abstract to the BVM 2021. Let's start with the motivation. With this image on the right hand side we can already see where this journey is going to. It's about our blood vessels in our brain and how they are visualized. Before we dive into this visualization topic, let's talk about the structure itself we want to visualize, namely the circle of villus. The circle of villus is very good visible if we look on the brainstem. The circle of villus is a ring-shaped vessel structure which receives the blood through the basilaris and the carotis interna. So basically all the blood that has to go into our brain will sooner or later end up in the circle of villus. The job of the circle of villus is to distribute that blood onto the cerebral arteries, namely cerebri media, anterior and posterior. These three candidates play a crucial role in the supply of our both hemispheres. Thus, if they are occluded through a clot, for instance, it can cause severe damage to the respective brain parenchyma. We know this situation better as stroke. As it's hard to distinguish missing, thin or occluded vessels on a CTA dataset, it's helpful to visualize the cerebrovascular system. I will present you three visualization techniques addressing exactly this problem. First, there is the Digital Subtraction and Geography, short DSA, where we take a CTA dataset and a non-contrast enhanced CT dataset, we register both, subtract them, and what's left is the contrast enhanced vessel parts. It gives a rather clean segmentation, but it requires a native scan. Then there is what I call Virtual DSA, or sometimes Pseudo DSA. You take a CTA dataset, you remove all bone structures and then you render with the best window you can find and what's left is what we can see here at the bottom right. As you can see it's quite noisy but it needs no native scan which is nice. The idea itself is not bad though, so we build on top of that concept and introduce Virtual DSA++ which extends the Virtual DSA in the center with post-processing algorithms and the labeling and what you can see here is on the bottom right. Basically a clean segmentation which requires no native scan and basically combines the advantages of the, bath, well, of the both left columns. So let's talk about it and let me present its features. First, as I said, it leads to a segmentation and modeling of the cerebrovascular system and that fully automated. It can also label the cerebral arteries, cerebri anterior, media and posterior left and right. We use the labeling to automatically detect occlusions in, the in these vessels, but more on that later. It leads to a feature we call vein suppression, which tackles a common problem in the visualization. You don't really need the whole tree, for instance this bow-shaped um, structure here, the sinus sagittalis, is um, neglectable in the stroke diagnosis, thus it makes sense to exclude it. To do this, a user is asked to set a root node, represented by this blue cube, and is further asked to set a rendering distance. Everything that is accessible within this walking distance is then being rendered accordingly. For the vein suppression, the algorithm computes shortest pathways from the root node iteratively to all other nodes in the graph and tracks their distances. If a node is accessible within the set distance, it's being rendered including the path onto it. As a byproduct, we can visualize also these shortest pathways, which is the last feature. Um, they can be used to for pathfinding problems, for instance in mechanical for mechanical tombectomies. Um, in this case, it does not really make sense to plan a path quite deeply into the brain, but rather starting from the carotis interna, for instance. So it's time for a demonstration. Everything you will see now was computed on an ordinary CPU, and the subject we will see ba is basically more or less healthy, with no large vessel occlusions. The demonstration starts with the output of the skeletonization. I will clarify later what that means. First, um, the root node is being set by the user and the graph search is initiated, which is quick. It only took 235 milliseconds to compute all the shortest pathways. We can now use the graph search to reduce the model to the relevant parts. For this purpose, we change the running distance and set the desired one to, and we can let it grow interactively. That is vein suppression. 
We can also now search for shortest pathways just by clicking into the desired goal point. And it's quick as well, it just takes 7 to 15 milliseconds per path. As it is already cached in the background, we have computed the whole path, we have done the whole graph search, and we just reuse our results basically. We can reduce now the model again to the relevant part, namely to the circle of Willis, and replace the root node again. For instance, into the Carottes interna. So here is the root node being removed and we can replace it to the Carottes interna. This is the place where it rather makes sense for planning me mechanical thrombectomies. We already saw that the model changes immediately because we have a different reference point now. Thus, a different vein suppression model. Now you also saw the labels when the model was completely gone. With this subject, all labels are available and set correctly. This is not always the case. In a preliminary experiment, we determined the sensitivities between 91% and 97%, depending on the vessel in terms of the placing accuracy. That's all for the demonstration now. Let's continue with the actual pipeline. So, every pipeline starts with the input and so does ours, um, with the CTA dataset next to the brain atlas and the vessel atlas. All these volumes are now processed by this image processing pipeline, which is quite comprehensive. But let me explain you this step by step. First, the dataset is being registered in B to the brain atlas. The resulting transformation is used in C to transform the vessel atlas into the CTA coordinate system. In parallel, the CTA dataset is forwarded into a deep learning based bone removal tool in A. The boneless CTA dataset is filtered using the Fungi filter in D, which reacts well to tubular vessel structures. A binarized version of this vessel atlas is used to mask out the vessel vessel regions from the fungi result, and that happens in E. This map is used for a slice-wise half transformation in F, where the circle center points are filtered out such that only the ones are left which are located inside a vessel. That happens in step D. These center points are used again as seed points for a region growing in H. This region growing is or this region growing result is again used for another region growing in I, but this time based on the boneless CTA dataset. This results in the final segmentation, which is further refined and modeled using the DTF skeletonizing, skeletonization algorithm in J. The labeling uses an intermediate result from the first region growing H and markers placed originally in the vessel atlas. These markers are transformed into the desired uh, into the uh, dataset at hand, um, which looks somewhat like this. The markers basically then represent the average vessel direction, and in this example, it matches quite good to the actual segmentation. If a vessel is not located nearby, this is a strong indicator for an occlusion in these respective vessels. And that's the way how we determine occlusions. Finally, the DTF skeletonization is further used for the graph search. And the graph search is basically what I have shown to you in the demonstration before with all this interactive setup. That was Virtual DSA++ and Thank you for the attention.